In this video, I want to provide an introduction to simultaneous equations in econometrics, and I'm going to explain some of the issues which arise when you try and estimate simultaneous equation models. Okay, so what do I mean by a simultaneous equation model? Well, an example would be, let's say we thought an individual's wage was determined by, let's say, their level of um, status within a society. So only those of a high status tend to be given jobs which uh, pay more. Furthermore, we think that another determinant of wage might be some sort of governmental policy, which I'm going to represent here by this policy variable. And then there are a range of other factors which are contained in this error term epsilon 1 here. Furthermore, we think that status is itself determined by the level of wage which an individual earns, because there is some sort of feedback between these two things. And furthermore, there is also a status gain, let's say, for being married or let's say having a family, which I'm representing in this M term here. There are a range of other factors which also affect an individual status within society, which are contained within this error term epsilon 2 here. OK, so we've got two equations and there is obviously some coupling between these two equations because wage in the second equation appears in an independent variable whereas it is the dependent variable of the first equation. And similarly, status appears as the dependent variable of the second equation, but it's actually the independent variable from the first, so we can sort of draw arrows like this. So there are obviously is some sort of feedback, or sort of not necessarily feedback, but there is some sort of interaction between both of these two equations. So these two equations together form what we call a sort of simultaneous equation model, which is sometimes abbreviated as SEM. So what's the problem with estimating these two above equations by OLS? Well the issue is that we actually get something which is known as simultaneity bias and all that means really is that we are having some bias in our estimates of the parameters as a result of the fact that there is endogeneity within our models. So how does this bias actually appear? Well, in order to see this, what we need to do is we are going to substitute in uh, for status in the first equation using our relationship for status from the second equation. So if we do that, we're going to get that wage is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 times status. Well, status is just this whole term here. So it's beta 1 times gamma naught plus beta 1 gamma 1 times wage plus beta 1 gamma 2 times whether an individual is married, plus beta 1 times epsilon 2. And then finally, we've got these two terms up here because they still appear. So we're going to have plus beta 2 times this policy variable plus epsilon 1. OK, so we've done a little bit of rearranging of stuff. And if we do a little bit further and we take this wage expression here right over to the left hand side, we get that 1 minus beta 1 times gamma 1 times an individual's wage is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 times gamma naught. So all of these things are, are what we would think about as constants in our sort of relationship. And then we get plus beta 1 um, times gamma 2 times whether an individual is married. And then we get, importantly, plus beta 1 times epsilon 2 plus beta to times our policy term, which I'm going to put in over here. And then finally, we get our epsilon 1 term here. OK, so we've done a lot of rearranging of stuff. And why have we done it? Well, the reason we've done this is because if I was to then divide through by this expression on the left hand side, we would just have an expression for wage on its own. And what is contained within that expression? Well, importantly, wage contains this error term epsilon 2 here. So in other words, wage is in some way correlated with error term epsilon 2. And because wage is correlated with epsilon 2, that means that in this second relationship up here, we have got some interaction between our independent variable and our error term. And because of this interaction, that means that we have endogeneity. And because we have endogeneity, we know from Gauss-Markov that that is going to result in our estimates via OLS being both biased and inconsistent. And furthermore, if we were to do the, exactly the same thing, but now substituting in for wage from the first equation into wage for the second equation, we would also find that 
status is correlated with the error term epsilon 1. So OLS estimation for, of both of these equations would be both biased and inconsistent. So it's not a very good thing to do essentially. So I hope that this has provided a little bit of insight as to why we need to think about simultaneous equation models in a slightly specialized way because of the fact that OLS kind of breaks down when we try and estimate OLS on just the equations as they stand. And I'm going to talk about how we can actually go about rectifying this situation as well as some other issues with simultaneous equations in the next few videos.